And uh, John Clayton is standing by. He's ready to roll. He is our NFL insider. You hear him on 710 ESPN in Seattle or on Seahawks broadcasts. Um, he's writing now about the Denver Broncos in Denver. He writes for the Washington Post. And here is John Clayton back on Kaplan and Crew. Hey, John. Hey, how we doing? Doing pretty good yourself. Doing well, doing well. All right, Browner and Grande, let me get you guys' opinion. Uh, what's the biggest story going right now in the NFL? For me, it's kind of twofold. I'll, I'll say, what's going to happen to Aaron Rodgers? And then I got to say, after that, what will happen with Julio Jones? But the way the Julio Jones story came out is interesting. What do you guys think? Is there a, maybe I'm missing? Um, Aaron Rodgers' Hawaii vacation is top of mind because those videos are hilarious. I don't know if you have seen. He's out there with actor Miles Teller and his wife. It's looking like they're like just like doing a big old Woodstock hippie Hawaii retreat, dude. That's what's funny. who's Miles Teller? What, what what's he in that I should know? He's gonna be in the Top Gun in the next Top Gun movie. Oh, really? Is he the new Maverick? Uh, Maverick is still in the Top Gun movie, but I think yeah. he is like portraying this, the new Maverick, the new, new Maverick. Yeah. Okay. And Browner, I'd love to hear what you have to say, but I always like it when you're on mute. So, you know, for me, that's one of my favorite things. What do you think is the biggest story? Uh, Justin Fields in minicamp. Get out of here. All right. Here's John Clayton. What? John, John, what's what you tell us, John, you, you are as in tune with the NFL as anybody. What's what, in your opinion is the biggest story going right now? Oh, there's no doubt it's Aaron Rodgers because, again, what's the ramifications of what's come out each day? Like for today, Mark Murphy, the president of the team, came out and says, no, if Aaron Rodgers uh, doesn't come in, we're not firing the general manager because obviously you can see that Aaron has a big problem with the GM. But now the problem carries to the team. Now, the good news is 79 of the 89 players were at practice today, but they didn't have uh, Aaron Rodgers, who's in Hawaii, they didn't have Devontae Adams. They didn't have Alan Lazard. So two of their top receivers weren't there. And you can kind of see that in some ways, Devontae Adams, even though he wants to stay with Green Bay, is aligned with Aaron Rodgers and supporting him. He said good things about uh, him a week or so ago. And so that's got to be disturbing because, again, you're trying to put an offense together. You're trying to you know, get through this tough period. And right now, Aaron Rodgers does not want to be there. I... um. But don't you think? I, well, don't you think? <laughs> don't you think Devontae Adams' success and his money is tied to Aaron Rodgers? So he would absolutely say nice things about Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. In fact, I don't know if you saw Pro Football Focus, but Pro Football Focus did the rating of wide receivers and rated Adams the best receiver in the league. Wow. Maybe a little bit well, of a surprise. I don't listen that's... to Pro Football Focus ratings because their quarterback ratings was way off. I don't know. Really? If you oh, John Clayton. Dak Prescott, number seven in the NFL? Yeah. No, sir. Why not? He oh, has my God. One oh. leg. He has one leg. What's that? He only has one healthy leg. It's. I mean, he's he's going to be healthy this season. You think so he's you the judge seventh best quarterback in yeah. the NFL? I do. It was, well, here, here's the weird part about it. One of the guys who wrote the article was Bruce Gradkowski from mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, a former quarterback good friend. I, you know, work with him on serious and different stuff. In fact, I even had him on my podcast this week, schooled with the professor that's going to be out at four o'clock on Wednesday. Okay. And so he has, a, he does a segment in Pittsburgh on the station. I do my segment on. And so the, the station asked me, it's like, okay, let's go through some of these ratings. And I went one, one, one through nine. And I agreed. I mean, the only one I maybe disagreed with was maybe having Lamar Jackson a little bit too high, but then in rethinking about it, I mean, he should be number eight. But Dak Prescott, because what you're looking at is what happened when Dak Prescott got hurt. Okay, the team had a tough beginning schedule. They started out two and three. And then once he was down, then uh, they go four and, uh, you know, they only won four games the rest of the season. They went four and seven. And so when he's healthy, particularly with the offensive weapons that he has, they're a playoff caliber team. So they go from playoff caliber team to non-playoff caliber team. And so when you start to look at the, you know, the rate of what he's and his importance, you can see he's good. He comp completes a good percentage of his passes. He's a good athlete, a good leader. I think I'm, I'm comfortable with him, number seven. But better better than Lamar Jackson. Uh, you were on the right direction, then you backtracked. <laughs> better than Lamar Jackson. But even when he was playing, the year he was actually playing a full healthy year, he got beat out for a playoff spot by the Eagles, who had no one on the roster. Yeah, but how much of that was the defense and how much of that was injuries and everything else? 
I mean, you know, I, I think he's good. I, I really think that you can respect what he does. I think that, uh, you know, when he's out there, they have a chance. And so I, I think he's number seven, and I'll, I'll be comfortable with that. We, we've been debating this list since it came out, John. It's awesome because um, lists like these create yeah. a lot of talk. So, okay, Patrick Mahomes, number one, we all kind of get that. Tom Brady, number two, we all believe that. I mean, he's the greatest champ, right? Aaron Rodgers was MVP last year. We got it. Russell Wilson, everybody buys that. Deshaun Watson, okay, look, there's a lot of off-the-field problems, but everybody knows that this guy is a young superstar. Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills, I would say, kind of qualifies in that same range, has already kind of brought the Bills back to – playoff contenders the Prescott thing that we've all been arguing is is that he got injured so badly last year and he got the big money contract and he's number seven in these rankings but we haven't seen results and we're concerned about like will he be back to who he was will he be better will he not be able to be back um versus a Lamar Jackson who I kind of feel like is the most electric player in the league. Even Matt Ryan at nine seems ridiculous. Matthew Stafford at 11. I don't know, man. We, we all disagree. And, and, and you know what else is interesting? Justin Fields ahead of Jared Goff. Well, that's the, other, snap. <laughs> that's the other thing is, is, is um, you see some of these rookie quarterbacks, uh, Trevor Lawrence at 21, as an example, you're like, wow, Trevor Lawrence is 21. The dude hasn't taken a snap yet. Um, so Zach Wilson is ahead of Jalen Hurts or Drew Locke. So anyway, we've all been debating about this list for about a week now, John. But see, but uh, the three of you are overdoing it on the Prescott injury. I mean, it's like you, you played the game of football, correct? Well, I mean, I kicked the football. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I know. But it's like, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, guys recover from injuries. If you're dwelling on the injury and he gets past the injury, which he has, <laughs> he's going to be fine. I mean, just because he got hurt last year. I mean, what are you going to take away what Aaron Rodgers did a couple years ago when he got hurt? But his no, but I, I, Prescott's I would, ankle snapped in half. Like it was one of those injuries where he's just like, like, not listen, not as bad as Alex Smith, but it's up there where it's just like those. They just look so terrible mm -hmm. that you have to question it a little bit. Like when Paul George did the same thing, I never thought he was going to get back to what he got to. But if you work hard and come back, I mean, you know, Tom Brady had a knee injury, and so he came back from that. So uh, no, I, I think <clears throat> don't overdo it on the injury front because I mean, if you have almost a year. <laughs> to recover from an injury before you play your first game, then you're in good shape. He missed 11 games last year. They went six and 10. They weren't the same team without him. Now they will be a better team with him. I won't even use the injury. I will say on his performance from losing out to, to, to wins in a playoff race and then being two and three, when he got hurt, like I, I just don't see the love affair. So maybe I'm biased in my opinion of Dak. Prescott. You are, you are. Yeah. I, I mean, clearly I must be, I, <laughs> He's I just not don't. a bear. I, well, that's true. <laughs> right. That's if he true. was a bear, he'd be Listen, number one. Oh, if yeah. he was a bear, I'd be like, he number four. That's not even a discussion. <laughs> we already know that to be true. I just, I guess I'm just biased against him because I, I've never seen him rise to the moment for all of the pub and praise that he gets for being a Cowboys quarterback. If he was a Jaguars quarterback, th there would not be this much conversation about Dak Prescott. Well, yeah, but, Dallas is a better team. Jacksonville stinks. I mean, what they've had one winning season in a decade. Yeah, I mean, please. I mean, you bring up Jacksonville, but again, it's like, uh, you know, what you're looking at with uh, Dak Prescott. I mean, he puts up good numbers. He completes 66% of his passes. I mean, he can throw for over 4,000 yards. But so does Matt Stafford. What's that? Matt Stafford yeah, does but, that too. And he's number 11. See, here's, here's where the difference is. Here's where the difference is. And, and this is in your division where the Bears are. True. Has Detroit surrounded Matthew Stafford with any talent? No. Oh, no, no. That's it. Okay. Yeah. He's been good enough to get them the four playoff games that they lost, but that's because there's not a lot of talent there. <clears throat> They've starved him for talent. And so, you know, Dak has had more success. He has won a playoff game now. I know because I was at that game doing the sidelines on the Cowboys sidelines because it was down in Dallas and Dallas beat Seattle. And so it's like, He's now got to that stage where you win. And understand, he's still young. I mean, because, you know, you go back to Matt Ryan, who's had a great career. Maybe he's a little high at number nine. But Matt, it took Matt, Matt Ryan three years, three games, to win a playoff game. It took him to his fourth game. He lost his first three playoff games. It's not easy to win playoff games because what happens is, I mean, you go in and you play quarterbacks who might be better. Take a look at that list of the top 14 that are there. 
on Pro Football Focus. The top 14, 10 of those teams, uh, 10 of those quarterbacks were at the playoffs last year. 10. And the better the quarterback, the higher rating the quarterback, the better it is. I mean, is it a surprise that Mahomes is number one and Brady's number two? No. Is it a surprise that uh, Aaron Rodgers is number 13? He won, I mean, number three. He won 13 games in the last two years. And then Russell Wilson won 12 last year. Yeah. You know, it's interesting about this, by the way. I think you're so right that there's a, there's a perception of Dak Prescott, I have it myself, that he's hurt. He had not really led the, the Cowboys to a real – he, he hasn't really led them to true title contention thus far. And coming off the injury, he got more contract than he was ever offered when he was previously healthy. So there's this, this kind of perception we have of Dak. And by the way, you talk about playoffs. I was at a playoff game a couple of years ago. Dallas was hosting Green Bay. So now to your point, John, about you're facing the best quarterbacks. If you remember that division game, It took Aaron Rodgers in the final seconds rolling to his left and this brilliant throw that he had along the sideline. I'm trying to remember the name of the tight end who just barely got two feet in. And um, Rodgers and the Packers wind up kicking the game-winning field goal and the, the Cowboys lost at home in the divisional round to the Packers. So, you know, it's like, okay, so who did Dak Prescott lose to in the playoffs? Aaron Rodgers. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you watch that for how many years in the AFC because uh, you go back particularly to the early 2000s. After 2002, I mean, there was only four quarterbacks in the AFC that won Super Bowls. And the four were Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Joe Flacco. I mean, those are three of the four. And then the other one's Ben Roethlisberger. And so if you're – yeah, so what happens is, you know, oh, so he hasn't taken the team to the Super Bowl. I mean, look at the stuff that Aaron Rodgers is going through right now. I mean, you know, he's upset with management because they haven't gotten a talent. He's upset because they drafted a quarterback. He's upset about this. He's upset about that. And, you know, he's only won one Super Bowl, and and he's lost four consecutive NFC championship games. And so you can see that's bitter on him because that affects his legacy, but his legacy – you know, is you 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 go up against great quarterbacks when you're in the playoffs. I think that's so funny about Aaron Rodgers too, because you're talking about you you brought up Stafford and how he was surrounded yeah. with no talent, and Aaron Rodgers complaining about his talent. Aaron Rodgers has the number one receiver according to Pro Football Focus. They have a top what five running back. They have uh, this tight end who caught the second most touchdowns, I believe, for any tight end in the NFL last year. I mean, they've always had a consistently good offensive line. I think their left tackle is probably mm-hmm. the best in the game. And they got an offensive-minded young head coach to work with him, and he's still pissed off. Like, what more? Like, where is he? Where is he expecting to go? Where it's going to be better? Okay, so uh, how many catches did his number two receiver have? The answer is thirty-three. <clears throat> for thirty-three, for as much as he throws and as much as he does, that's like a number three or four receiver. So he's got Devontae Adams, a decent pass-catching tight end, and then nothing else. I mean, are, are you big Alan Lazard fan? But how many teams have more than that, though? I mean, I, uh, Tampa Bay. Because because Aaron Jones is catching a ton of passes out of the backfield. Right. So right. how many? I just I just I just wonder, like, what team is he going? Yeah, Tampa Bay. But like, what team is he going to go to that is willing to trade for him? Where the situation is going to be better? That's my question Denver. for him. Denver. Look at the so three Melvin receivers. Gordon's an upgrade. What's that? Melvin Gordon's an upgrade over Aaron Jones. Cortland well, Sutton's I mean, an upgrade Javante, over Devontae they took Adams. Javante, they took Javante Williams in the second round, too, so they have two, two running backs. You know, They've got Jeff Judy, who I thought was the best receiver in last year's draft. Then they also have Cortland Sutton, Sutton coming off his injury. They had a second-round wide receiver last year. They have Noah Fant at tight end. I mean, there, there's more talent in the skilled positions in Denver than there is with the uh, – Green Bay Packers. All right, we're talking to John Clayton here this afternoon on Kaplan and Crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. I love this conversation. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. John, make a prediction then. If Aaron Rodgers is gallivanting around Hawaii with his actor buddies and they're on a double date and he's not with the Packers right now in their offseason program, Mm -hmm. uh, and everything we've heard, even recently, I mean, Aaron Rodgers on ESPN last night with Kenny Mayne, um, if if you have to make a prediction, to where will he play, and when will a decision be made? What do you think? I think it's going to be late September. I think it's going to be Denver. 
<clears throat> and uh, I don't know what the value of the trade is going to be because it's probably going to get a little bit discounted because there's not a lot of teams that will be bidding and trying to do that. So in the end, I think that what you're looking at is that he'll get a chance to uh, go to Denver, but I think they're going to have to wait him out. Wow. It, it, so wait, you don't think he'll, you think that he will, will, do you think Aaron Rodgers will miss training camp with the Packers, not put yes. on a Packer uniform, and then they'll be forced to trade him? You don't think that this happens in the off season so, the, so that everybody can get what they want, which is the Packers can have closure and the Broncos can have their new guy and work on the system. I mean, it, that means if, if that happens, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't get moved until late September, until after the season starts, it's a lost year for the Broncos, a lost year for the Packers, and a lost year for Aaron Rodgers. Don't you think? No. Oh. Why is it a lost year for the Broncos? Because I mean, he comes in, yeah. doesn't know their system, doesn't know their language, doesn't know their talent, doesn't have chemistry. And now let's just say you're three, four weeks into the season. What do we expect from the Broncos with a quarterback who's just getting to their to their organization? I'm, I'm asking you what you think. Well, I mean, again, it's like he can get up to speed as, as quickly as he can and gives them a better quarterback to try to go. Remember, they have one of the better defenses in the league. They've got three good receivers. <clears throat> They've got, uh, you know, uh, we'll see about Vic Fangio as a head coach. The Bears, uh, but uh, oh god! But what you're what you're looking at is that uh, that's a major upgrade because just like what we were talking about, the 10, 10 of the fourteen quarterbacks that were in the playoffs last year, the better quarterback, the deeper you go, and so it's not the perfect situation, <clears throat> but you do <clears throat> get the quarterback that can get you there to the Super Bowl or at least get you deep into the playoffs. John, I agree I would, with John too. I don't think it's a wasted year at all if they get him late September. I would pose. I would pose an even uh, maybe a, a even bigger conundrum, quite possibly for the Broncos. Would you rather have Deshaun Watson, who's probably going to play longer, or Aaron Rodgers? I think right now <clears throat> it's hard to sell the Deshaun Watson thing because if you he'd get be cheaper, him, but he'd be cheaper, right? No. Oh, I mean, as far as value, possibly, yes. yeah. Yeah, the trade value. <laughs> but the problem is, you know, he's got a $39 million a year contract. And you, you, uh, I, I don't know what his cap number is off the top of my head right now, but also his off the field problems, because it's not like these things are going to be resolved this year. I mean, right now from the court schedule, these cases are going to be heard in 2022. And Ooh, so now man. that's not good. No, that is not good. We're talking to John Clayton, our longtime NFL insider here on Kaplan and crew, along with Grande and the Brown man. Hey, John, I'm curious to get your opinion on this. Um, it seems to be a pretty hot topic around the country and we got about a minute and a half, but here goes. Did you see Julio Jones get a call from Shannon Sharp? I, I know really people don't mm -hmm. watch this Fox TV show, but they, they get it cut up in other places. Okay. So with that said, do you think it was, all off the cuff. Do you think it was planned? Do you think that they knew what they were going to get? Do you think he knew he was on TV? I'm just curious what you think about that Julio Jones situation with Shannon Sharp. Oh, I thought, I thought it was great because then we were able to figure out the whole true story of what's going on that he wants out of there. <clears throat> His agent came out after that came and said that he asked to be traded about a month or so ago. I mean, it was right to the point. I'm out of here. And so we don't know exactly what the reason is, uh, but we also know that the Falcons have cap problems. I mean, to a point where I think they only have like $338,000 of cap room. And they're like the only team in the league that hasn't signed one of the few teams in the league that hasn't signed a draft choice because oh. they can't. And they've got to wait till <laughs> June 1st <clears throat> to start clearing some money. And clearly they're going to clear him. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Did you, what did you guys think? Did you guys think, that 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 happened and it was like oh hold on i'm gonna call julio hey julio oh, i told you my yeah. nephew was gonna answer the phone or do you no think chance. i know i think mm -hmm. that was all pre-planned it was like hey dude can you come on the show no i'm gonna be driving i'm gonna be out and about okay we'll just call you like don't you think that's what really happened it was all pre-planned dude okay, there's no chance because shannon's never done that before and there's no way he's gonna put his relationship on the line with right, whatever it is with this kid right. to just get uh who knows what he was gonna get you know, and it, and it was so quick and it was so specific to the Cowboys. It wasn't like, where do you want to go? It was like, do Skip's you want a Cowboys, Cowboys fan? Skip loves the Cowboys. Let's like, let's just do this for the Cowboys. And I think he gave him the blind that, Hey, I'm out of there. It's like he got what he wanted. So. And he never said, Hey, you're on live TV, which intimated to me that he knew the call was coming and right. he knew that he was going to be on TV. Um, John, real quick. We got 10 seconds here, but I just, where's Julio Jones land? What do you say? I think San Francisco, good chance of that. I don't see New England because yeah. they've already got two $12.5 million tight ends and they're paying the wide receivers. It could be 
you know, maybe the Chargers, but you figure that probably is not going to happen. Uh, Baltimore is going to be in the mix, but uh, I think right now it's San Francisco over Baltimore. All right, John Clayton, everybody. John Clayton, uh, John, where can people read? Wh- where do you want to direct people? You got so much going on. Yeah, I know this week, I just, in fact, I just got off the phone a little bit ago uh, with Tampa Bay. So on the Washington Post, you got the uh, 104.3 in Denver, where I'm writing every day, uh, 710 ESPN Seattle, uh, where I do two stories a week. So it's like uh, plenty, plenty of things to do. All right. There and also, don't forget, don't forget the podcast, Schooled with the Professor, because we do talk for 20 minutes about the quarterback ratings. All right. Schooled with the professor is the podcast. John Clayton, our NFL insider. John, great to see you. Thank you very much for the lively debate. Okay. Thanks.